So hello, welcome to week number four. Uh, so electronics production, um, and today we're going to learn uh, how to make boards like these uh, or or these here, like with a SRM um, twenty machine. So I can also transition into that here. Uh, so we're going to cover where to find the designs um, so for the for this text, uh, test exercise and then how to uh, how to use mods um, in order to mm, make two paths from the images that are available online uh, and then how to drive uh, this machine and how to install tools uh, and then also when the board is going to be ready how to solder it under the microscope so you, the microscope is really nice thing to have because you can show in real detail um, what's happening with the solder, when it melts and what flo flows over the, the components and so on. So let's start with, um, with where to find the, the files. Um, so what do you have to do is uh, you go to fabacademy.org and when you go to content and then archive in 2020 and then schedule and then you click on electronics production on the bottom of the page uh, you will see that there's the assignment part and there's a link to an in-circuit programmer page where there's a list of different in-circuit programmers that have been made in the past uh, and that you can make during the course so last year um, People mostly would make ISP AVR uh, programmers, so they look like this. Um, but these are a lot of parts and they are relatively complicated, uh, so it's hard to program. So you would need this uh, ISP programmer uh, which with, with six pins and then... So if you choose to make one of those, then so from ISP category, then I would go with something that is... Uh, AT Tiny 44 and actually I would just go with the uh, default Niels version so which is here on the bottom so there's a uh, design file um, then the board itself so the layout where you can find all the components that have to be laid out there uh, and then the actual yeah how it looks no this was this is not that oh sorry I'm jumping over here so here this um, yeah, how it looks at the end. Um, so we have here all of the necessary components in order to make this. So from my experience, this this one is uh, it works. So it had, has been tested by many pe many people, and then you can really use this uh, in order to program other AVR boards. Uh, but this year uh, there's an update. So there are two new families of chips being introduced, and one uh, one of them is the AVR. O1 series, uh, which uses a new uh, standard for programming, uh, a new uh, protocol, which is called uh, UPDI. And there are two boards that you can use um, in order to program your future boards with um, UPDI. So one is a, is an adapter board that would that would um, convert FTDI, um, so FTDI cable to to UPDI. So, so yeah, this is a um, FTDI cable, um, and these usually come in two flavors. So. One is uh, 5 volts and the other is 3.3 volts and that depends on the... So, and you need to make sure what kind of logic are you using. So some, some chips use 3.3 volts and some chips use uh, 5 volts. Uh, and depending on that you need to kind of choose the cable. So and you can tell the voltage from this label over here, so on the USB part of it. So if you look around. And then in the lab, you can find it here, so in these two pockets. Um, 
here. And then the first board is basically an uh, adapter board, which converts from FTDI to UPDI. And then you would connect the UPDI board that you're going to make later, or that we are going to use for testing in next week, uh, in order to use uh, the Python script that is referenced over here. Uh, so in order to program it. And then a bit more complicated board, so which is more like a challenge. So you could start with the adapter board and then continue with this one. Uh, it's which already includes the FTDI chip. And uh, so we have these FTDI chips, but the problem is that the spacing in between these pins is um, is is um, really small. And uh, you have to be very careful in, in terms of milling uh, and also soldering in, in order to be able to make it. But uh, so it's totally possible with the tools that we have here. And, and this is the board, even though it doesn't work at the moment. But uh, so as, as for soldering exercise, though, so it's a, it's a good one. Um, so this is the the soldering challenge. If you feel, start to feel comfortable with soldering, so I would uh, recommend you to try out to make this. Then, if you're in for speed uh, and you want to make some something that does a lot of processing, whatever processing it is, then you are welcome to try ARM uh, programming boards. So here, where this this free DAP. Um, so this D11C chip, we have that. Uh, so where is it? Yeah, ARM Cortex, uh, which one? See the third uh, ARM Cortex M2 SMD D21, but there was a D11. Yeah, this is the D11 one. So, and with this, you would have, um, so it's easier to solder. So when you make, you, you would make this with the, with the regular method that I'm going to show you now. Uh, and it's much easier to solder because, um, because of the pitch between the, the legs, so be between the pins. Um, and actually, you could theoretically use this as an FTDI convert also you just you would need to upload special code to it and what is this so this T11C so this is a, another version so this is a modified version it's a bit different I think it's yeah here there's a voltage converter which converts to probably to 3.3 volts because probably these chips work on 3.3 volts so yeah but I would um, recommend you to stick to UPDI and first make the first one uh, so the adapter board, and then when you feel comfortable with that, try to make the other one, which is the FTDI board. So if you make, if you manage to make these two this week, then uh, you're you're completely fine. So <coughs> to start with uh, this design, so it actually doing things. Um, so we need the board to see what parts we need here. Uh, then we need the traces. Uh, so this is an image for the traces, so which we are going to import in mods. And we need the interior, uh, so which is for the outline. So we will save these images on the desktop. Like this. And then we are going to go to the desktop and we are going to open mods. So, um, so there's an icon here, but uh, you can also open the browser and you can go to mods.cba.mit.edu and you can open it here. Um, so it's a software that runs in the browser. So basically all the tool class generation and all the operations that are happening in JavaScript. And when you right click, 
you can open a server program. And you, you need to scroll down to SRM20, which is this machine. And you need to click on PCB PNG. It's going to open this network of things. Uh, the first thing that you need to do, you need to read in a PNG file. So you select the PNG file, desktop, and you're going to select the traces file here. Open. Uh, then we need to specify some defaults. So give all the, the rest of the system some defaults. So for milling traces, uh, so this 164 means um, 64th part of an inch or it's uh, equals 0.4 millimeters. So I click mill traces and all the other settings are being adjusted. And then here for the tool diameter, I'm going to enter so it's automatically sets it to a fractional to fraction of uh, so kind of an inch, uh, but you can specify also the size in millimeters. Um, so and we are using 0.4 bit and actually the thickness that we can define. Uh, so the thickness of the copper layer uh, is 0.1 millimeters. Uh, so yeah, for the milling bit. So. The milling bits you can find here on the side of the machine. So they are the three most popular ones. I'm also going to switch over to the camera. So yeah, these are the three uh, most popular ones. So one is uh, 0.4, which you use for milling traces. And then there's a uh, 0.81 that you would use for cutting it out. And then for the finer one, so for the FTDI chip, you would use the 0.3 one. So in all of these you can find here on the side of the machine. Um, and if they break, then let us know. Uh, we're going to replace them. And then, uh, so yeah, for the cut depth, so we need to cut through a copper, a copper layer, so which is 0.1 millimeter. And uh, I'm talking here about this board, uh, so which is a FR1 material on the bottom and then a thin layer of copper on the top. So check it out. So there's a single sided version and a double sided version. Sorry? Um, you can measure that. Um, yeah, but it's, it's also in the specification. So. Um, yeah, to be honest, I haven't checked like specification, but it's the usual value that usually works, so 0.1 millimeters. Uh, and this is a double-sided one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you need to enter these numbers here. So now you know the tool diameter and, and the thickness that you want to cut. And then the max, maximum depth. Um, so in this case, it can equal the depth of the of the cut, which is 0.1 millimeters. Offset. Um, so that means how many times around the trace um, the the milling bit is is going. So if it would go one time, so if the offset would be one, then uh, so then it would just leave a 0.4 millimeter uh, gap in between the trace and the rest of the copper. Um, but four, four times, that, that means, yeah, it's, it's fine. So it's, uh, it makes it easy enough to solder so that you don't make uh, solder bridges. Um, and then the step over, so it's half of the diameter of, uh, of the tool. Step over is when it's milling, so how much, it's, how, uh, much it is stepping over to the next line that it is making. So in order to remove the copper. Uh, and other settings. So, and before we hit calculate, uh, there are some other things that we need to do here. And one is that we need to, so this is kind of the end of the, of the diagram and we need to remove this web socket device because by default what it does, so it assumes that you have a, a serial server running on, a, on your computer uh, that is being able to control the machine through the serial port. But we are going to do things separately. We are going to use the default software that is provided with the machine. 
so which is this V panel for SRM20. And we are going to lo load a file into it. Uh, and instead of this module, we need a file output module. So we're going to delete this. So in order to add a, a new module, you right click, you go to modules, um, open server module, and then you go to file and save. And then you click on the file in the output section of this one. And then in the input, in the file, uh, on the file yeah, area here in the input part. And it's going to create a line. So, uh, and then here, very important. Uh, so for the bits that we are using, um, so they are not as strong as the carbide bits that are actually recommended, but they are high speed steel bits and maybe not the best quality. So that if you're um, going too fast, they, they are going to break. So for, so I made a little page here. So what are the recommended, what are the recommended values? Just gonna stick it somewhere here. So for the 0.4 bit that we are now going to use, we should use 1.5 millimeters per second that we are going to enter here. And then for the origin, so I would set everything to zero because this is what we are going to set ourselves manually. Jog height, it means that how, how high the tool is uh, moving um, before when it is moving from one location to another because sometimes there's a dead end if he's milling a trace and then the tool needs to jump to another place to start a new uh, a new trace, like a new new path, then it needs to jump and go to that place. So it's uh, otherwise it would would just make a diagonal line over all the existing traces um, that you have there. And then for the home, um, yes, yeah, so it is O O O. Uh, no, and for the Z, um, leave five. Um, so it's. Yeah, so it's like the home position, so where the tool positions uh, itself when, when it starts to, when it starts cutting. Uh, and now we are set and we can actually go back to the mill raster 2D module and we can hit, uh, yeah, before we do that, make sure that you have climb setting here selected. Uh, so if you remember from lecture yesterday, so the difference between climb and conventional is that climb leaves a, a much cleaner cut. And then you hit calculate. So it's calculating, you see it's generating the path. And then it's opening it also in a path viewer, so you can also examine it in 3D. So you see this is the origin. Uh, so Y, X, and then Z axis pointing upwards. And uh, so here you can see, so there are four lines always. So this is the, uh, so this is the clearance or the, the offset that we defined. So it goes four times um, around the trace. And then this white area is, is what is going to be left. So the copper that is going to be left there. So we can close this and it actually saved an file here, RML file. I'm gonna show it in folder. And I'm going to move it to the desktop over here. And then, so this is for milling the traces, but we are going to need also to cut the outlines. So we select another PNG file, which is going to be this interior PNG, open. And this time we are going to set the defaults for milling outlines. So 132 means uh, 0. Point Eight. So here you can also see that this value is uh, close to 0 0.8 and we can also fix that. So set it 0 0.8 and then depth of cut is going to be 0 0.6 and then maximum depth. So this is, uh, we want to cut through the board this time. So the board thickness is 1.6 millimeters, uh, but we're going to cut a little bit more in order to make sure that we cut it out. Uh, so in CNC milling, there's this thing about that, that, that a tool can cut in passes. So there's a, 
maximum depth for it where the cut of it is efficient. And uh, if you consider so that there's a so you should never go more than um, than half of the tool, but in, in with these micro tools, it's a bit different. So I think you yeah you can you can so if you if you're cutting 0.6 millimeters deep, that means that it's going to take one two yeah it's going to take three passes until it mills through. So it's going to go three times over. Uh, and in this case, we just need one loop around these traces and when we hit calculate we just get a yeah so this is how it's gonna go so it's gonna go several times around and here we get another file we're gonna move it to the desktop okay so <clears throat> and from here I'm going to switch to this combined view where we can see also the machine and otherwise I'm going to try to view the desktop because I want to see this panel here. Um, and this you can find on the desktop so when you switch the machine on with the, with the green button over there uh, then this should normally open, otherwise it would complain that the machine is not connected. And uh, the main thing that you can do with it is, uh, the first thing that you can do with this is move it around X, Y, and Z axes. And uh, so you need to make sure that you have the cursor step that you want selected. So in order to quickly move from place to place, make sure that you have uh, the continuous cursor step selected. So it's going to move it to the right to the left and forward and backward and you can use the Z buttons in order to control the Z and what we are going to do now is we are going to load a tool mm. so yeah you see that there's a uh, there's a material loaded already so I'm just gonna maybe quickly show how to deal with the material on maybe how to install the material first so maybe I go here and then enable the front camera so yeah so this is the board uh, well I'm gonna use this fresh board like this here and then this double-sided tape um, so in the video yesterday there was a, a, a bit different set of materials but this is what I have been using so far and it works really fine and then yeah I'm applying double-sided tape on the other side of this one like so and then using a knife to to cut it so you end up with something like this and um, then we remove the other side of it so this part is sticky and uh, okay let's transition to this one and then you make sure that this part is clear here more or less you attach it here uh, and the next thing is to choose a tool so in this case it's going to be the So the 0.4 millimeter tool, um, we are going to install it uh, there. So it goes like this. So we open that little box really carefully, not to break the tool inside. So the tool is positioned like this here. I take it out. And uh, together with 
in order to change it, I'll also need the, the tool. So it's labeled SRM20 tool change. So it's just next to the tool bits, like here. Um, and as, as yesterday, Neil showed in the video, so the first thing that you do, you install it a bit higher into the collet. So this is the collet here. Uh, you put the tool in. This is a really, it might, it might seem as a really tricky operation at first. So you move it in so that, yeah, like maybe as deep as possible, but still so that uh, you feel that this uh, screw, so I don't remember how it was called, like uh, alignment screw or um, holding screw, uh, set screw probably, is, uh, is being able to hit it um, and, and actually, yeah, hold it tight. So when it's installed, then you use the V panel in order to drive it around. So first you can use the continuous mode to approximately find that what is going on there. Ah, oh, they are moving some material, okay. So uh, yeah, first you approximately locate the tool above the, the place where you, where you want to set the origin and then you change the step size. So, <coughs> so these one ti uh, times 100 times 10 and times one, uh, it means steps, but also fractions of a millimeter. Um, so times one means one step, which is 100 of a millimeter then times 10 means 10 steps or uh, or one tenth of a millimeter and 100 steps is uh, one millimeter and when you have this setting on then whenever you click on the button it's going to move it uh, a little bit so and this allows you to precision control things uh, and then yeah you find the place where you want it to be on the x y axis and then for the z axis be really careful so um, there is one thing that I want to point out which is uh, so this distance over here so between uh, this structure over here and the frame that is um, used for the tool to keep on these linear guides um, so this should be um, like in the range from five millimeters to one centimeter because uh, so the tool it will want to go down and if this is too close to the frame then it's not gonna be able to go down because it's gonna hit the frame um, yeah and what you do at this point is uh, so the, the gap is, is okay so you use the tool uh, in order to release the, the, the re release the set screw uh, by holding the tool uh, with your with your finger like this. Uh, so you release the set screw and let the tool hit the surface. So and then you keep it with your hands a little bit so towards uh, so you, you might also you slightly like really uh, s gently push it towards the copper layer and then you adjust the set screw uh, clockwise in order to hold it uh, in place. And now... Yeah. And in order to set the origin now, you will need you need to use these um, X, Y, and Z buttons over here. So make sure that you are at the user coordinate system. So X, Y is going to set the X, Y origin, and Z is going to set the Z origin. Uh, how do you know if it's tight enough? Ah, uh, you will feel it. Oh. And then I usually lift it a few millimeters. And then I close the lid and then I make sure that 
you know, it is, you should start with a smaller speed just to check whether you have got, gotten the settings right. So I'll set it to 50%. And then the spindle speed can remain high, but I sometimes set it lower because if it's, if you need to be quieter, but uh, yeah, so the maximum spindle speed is, is okay here. And then you go to cut, you delete all the previous files, click on add, you go to desktop and then there's this uh, traces uh, RML file. You open it up and then you hit output and the machine is going to start to move. So it seems that the speed is okay, so I can actually increase it to 100%. And now we wait. Any questions so far? If I want to cut a PCB for deep uh, electronic components, should I also add drill, drill options? Yeah, so there are options. So actually, uh, this, is for SMD. this is for SMD. So if you went through holes, uh, there's an opportunity to drill holes. So with mods, it's rather tricky, but uh, in the later weeks, I'm going to show you the full flow um, that I came up with working here while well, working, working here. So which is uh, when you design your boards in KiCad and then you export Gerber files and then you use a bit different software on this computer, which makes the composition of all the different operations much easier. So including the, the drilling. Uh, but yeah, also with mods, uh, drilling is possible, so it's similar as the operation that you use for cutting out traces, so cutting out the outline, but reversed. So it's kind of, so you, if you imagine that file there, um, so I could go back uh, to desktop maybe. So if we go back to this file here, so you see it has this white area inside and the, and the black border around. Uh, so mods is going to take, uh, take the white area as something that has to be left and is going to calculate the tool, tool path so that it goes around. But if it would be reversed, so which you can actually do here in mods. So you can invert and then, then what happens then it's going to calculate the line from inside and then if you would have a white surface like a separate image file with black dots on it then you would load it here and use the outline default settings in order to uh, calculate the, the paths uh, from inside the, the dots. So from inside the holes that you need to make. So you would need to add a separate path. So you would uh, load the traces first. PNG for traces. You see what white areas are being left. And then you would uh, load the, the, drill, the drill image. And then you would go with interior at the end. And you would generate three separate, uh, three, three separate RML files. Yeah. Uh, so, any other questions? Um, what does this board do function-wise now? Ah, this is um, the this is going to be the uh, adapter board. So, in order to uh, convert USB. 
uh, or like serial signals into FTBI. So which in turn, I don't know, so this is converting into FTBI and the board is going to convert FTBI into UPDI, which is needed to, con to program the boards that we are going to make. Yeah, the programmer, like a programmer for extension. So. Uh, apparently it's much easier because like as, as Neil told yesterday in the in the lecture that um, so Gerber as a Gerber files as a format it's uh, really really old it comes if I am not wrong from the 70s like from the first so from the early methods how PCBs were produced and the early plotters and then now um, so there are not too many other uh, alternative uh, standards around so the manufacturing houses they still accept Gerber files but then kind of the new thing is actually to just accept images so because you can yeah you can uh, so there would be anyways these many different layers and most of the time it's about something being on the on the PCB on the layer or not and black and white is, is a very good way how to tell uh, when something has to be on the on the board or not so you, if you have a trace file then like with a white, white areas you would uh, you would tell where the copper has to stay on the board then um, yeah also the same with the drilling files uh, so the same with the solder masks uh, so with, with all the all the other things that you usually see on a PCB so if, if you take a look at uh, this one for example then you see that there are many different layers. So it's not just a copper layer, um, but yeah, there, there are holes. Um, so there's the solder mask, which covers the, the parts that we don't want to, uh, that we don't want others to touch. Um, then there's also like the silk screen layer, which is for printing. So for printing these different letters on the board. So all of that can be defined by using black and white image files basically which is much nicer uh, than than Gerber files because imagine if you have a freshly installed computer without no software so you can use that computer to check simple image files like PNGs or JPEGs but not necessarily Gerber files so um, so everything that is necessary for PCB milling you can find in this magic box here to the left on the machine so now we we'll just use a brush um, or there was also a better way like let me get the little vacuum cleaner <laughs> so if the vacuum cleaner is next to the not next to machine um, then just bring it here because it should be here and then you can open this uh, no before you open the lid um, there is a thing that you can do, which is usually in Roland software, uh, that you can bring the board forward so you can get easier access to, to the final result. And this you can do by clicking view. And now you can open the lid and then you can use the vacuum cleaner. And yeah, and it looks that it worked. So now uh, the trick is that you don't don't change the X and Y origin. So you leave it the same, but uh, you will change the tool to the tool that can be used for cutting. And you will uh, you'll set the Z for the tool because the manual change is going to make it almost impossible to reuse the same Z origin. So in order to do that um, let's transition to the camera so again I'm going to use this um, tool uh, in order to open the set screw like so and then after removing it uh, just 
make sure that you immediately put it back in the in the box so it doesn't fall down on the where did I put my box yeah this one so that yeah, it doesn't fall down and doesn't break because they're these are really small and brittle and then let's take the 0 0.8 0 0.8 tool 0.8 millimeter tool open it up and again same method so first when you load it uh, try to push it a bit deeper into the collet and yeah, set the set screw and then with the controller again go to continuous mode of movement and move the tool somewhere where it can touch uh, the copper but be careful with the Z when using the continuous mode because you can crash into the material and break the tool so once you are low enough just switch over to the millimeter mode and go again as deep as possible at the same time watching this the distance here like between the, the frame and the, and the frame of the spindle so uh, and at this point uh, you see that it's hovering uh, a nice spot on the copper so again you with one finger so I will uh, make a close-up for this so with one finger you hold the you hold the tool itself and with the other hand you open the set screw and you let it drop and then you hold it down and you set the set screw so it holds it down and now you use the Z button over here in order to set the new Z origin and notice that here when you look at the Z uh, value over here uh, as soon as I press Z and hit yes then this is gonna become zero and this is correct and now I can move it up a few millimeters and I can close the lid and I can go to cut delete the previous file click add and check the and take the interior RML file, open it, and output. And then while it's starting, I can also reduce the speed to 50. So before it's started to fully spin and check whether it's milling correctly. And it seems that yes, and now I can go to 100% and let it cut properly. So now it's going to go like this for a minute or so, so yeah. any other questions? I kind of was wondering about the values that it's taking, yeah. it was defined in the beginning? Okay. Yeah, so it's in the beginning, so mods. Um, It's there, so I, I covered it in the in the beginning of the video. So the values are so here are two presets mainly that you're going to use. One is for milling traces and milling outlines, and for metric tools, it is usually nice to set uh, the precise values over here. So it's nice to understand this module specifically. So the rest of it, uh, if you're interested, you can follow the image processing. Uh, adventures uh, and you can see how how the actual the actual vectors are being produced from the image yeah. uh, there was default I just optimized the values so that they match the tool uh, match the tools better but you, it's also okay not to change those sometimes but here it is important to uh, to set the correct role on SRM 20 milling machine uh, parameters so you want the origin to be on the zero and then you want the jump height to be 2, uh, you want the home position to be 0, 0 uh, for, the, for x and y, and then 5 for uh, z. And then you want, for each tool, make sure that you have the right speed. 
so in order to avoid to, to breaking to bre breaking the tool. So if you're milling the PCBs and there's nobody to help you, then in this box there are these smaller boxes um, with replacement tools. So. So yeah, these ones, um, yeah, there's a box with 0.4, so yeah, you can check this. And then we have, uh, of course, like 0.8 for cutting the outlines. So, and then we have also 0.3 for, for finer traces. So actually like it looks that the, the time is good so after milling this I could show you also how to mill the, the finer trace um, PCB uh, yeah and now when this is done so again oh, wait so here in the uh, vPanel software we can hit view in order to move the result closer to us and um, you know, open this up and then use the vacuum cleaner. And um, also, like one of the topics yesterday was uh, efficient use of material. So this time, even though I had a material there, um, uh, so I didn't use it, but normally you, you would just reuse it. You would find a blank spot and measure it, uh, whether, whether, it's, whether your board would fit on the, uh, on the leftover material. Um, so, but in this case, I just wanted to demonstrate how it would be from scratch. And uh, what you can do, you don't have to remove all the copper board, uh, but you can just get out so this little piece that your your resulting PCB, and then just remove the double-sided tape from the other side. Yeah, and well, here you go. So you can check this. Um, so now I think, uh, so let's make a five minute break and then I'm gonna continue with soldering. Okay, and now, yeah. So that's, uh, <coughs> okay, so it's gonna be a good quality here, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna check out, check out the issue uh, later. So yeah, and we can continue. So for this demonstration <coughs> here, I have, a, uh, I have a soldering iron, like a digital one here. Um, so I think it's going to be easier to uh, show it um, on this camera over here. So like a digital soldering iron which has uh, two parts. So one is uh, for the tip. So this tip is, is specifically nice for uh, the small SMD parts that we are going to solder. Uh, and in order to work with it, so we need to connect it to a power source with this USB 3 port. And then also plug it in uh, somewhere. Yeah, so this is also not so good. So I'm plugging it in the extension. Then get on the chair. Uh, so yeah, um, there's a little display on it, mm, so it shows some possibilities. But basically, what you need to remember, so in, in, when you when you start working, just press the the button, uh, the left the left button, and it's going to start working or start heating the tip um, to the uh, working temperature that has been preset or that you can set yourself. So just wait till it uh, goes up to its maximum level. So 
So now it's 270 degrees. Uh, but we would like to, you know, to to have more, like three three hundred and twenty. In order to set the temperature, you can uh, press. No, so you go back to the working mode, and then you press to the right. And it should allow you to. Wait. Or was it one more time? Ah, uh, yeah. So one more time to the left, and uh, you will get to a menu uh, where you can change the tem temperature. So I will set it to 320, and then just wait uh, for. So instead of uh, confirming it with the, with a button, so you just have to wait for a second for a few seconds for it to confirm. So again, um, so when I unplug it, um, unplug it back again. So now it's booting. In order to get to the working mode, you press the left button. And yeah, it's normally by default set to 270 degrees, but for soldering with the, with the solder that we have, we need 320. And in order to set the temperature, you press left once more. You press and hold left. Uh, and then you can set the temperature to, to 320. And then you just wait for, for a few seconds and this acts as confirmation and you can then wait till it reaches these 220 degrees. Uh, and then we can use uh, so this holder, uh, so this metal sponge to clean it. You can also use a wet sponge if you have one near, but this is just good enough. And then while it's hot and you're not using it, always keep it in the in a holder like this. Uh, another thing that we are going to use is uh, flux. Uh, so this is a flux pen. So it's so the flux flows through the sponge, and then you can apply it to, to areas that you need to apply it to. And we are going to use this uh, solder here, which is uh, um, which consists of I think it's like sixty forty, so sixty. Uh, Plumbum and then this other component solder. Uh, it's not right in here. Sun eighty. Oh. So no, uh, so lead lead is, is forty, and then this other which is MB is it, uh, what is this other component? I forgot. I need to check it. But yes, this is the sixty forty proportion, which uh, yeah, as yesterday in the video. So when you mix two of those, then uh, then the, the melting temperature of these two uh, it drops, uh, and it's easier to solder. Um, Next is that we are going to apply a little bit of flux uh, to all these, um, so with a flux pen, so to all the pads that we are going to solder. And what flux does is it cleans, so when it melts it cleans and then makes it easier for the solder to snap to the pads. Um, and as for the recommendation, we are going to start with the smallest uh, parts uh, and then move to the bigger ones and we're going to start with the resistor. And how this goes with SMD parts is that uh, you first add a little bit of solder on uh, one of the pads. So first start by heating up the pad a little bit and then add solder. Like so. Um, then we are going to need a set of tweezers. Find those here. So nice set of tweezers. So the sharper, the better. And we are going to introduce a resistor. So make sure that it's facing the right way. So you need to turn it around somehow. Come on. 
Let's talk. Yeah. So here we have it. And then we need to place it on the pads. So it also acts here as a, as a little bridge. So over the trace. <clears throat> now, if you are really gentle, then you could actually just touch the pad next to it, and it will melt the solder. It could also transfer the heat to the resistor, and it will just snap. So now it's actually already in place, so you cannot move it really. And then, when this is done, uh, then from the other side. You add the soldering iron so that it touches the the copper and also like uh, the resistor pad, and then you introduce the solder, and you add a little bit more so it flows over like this. And remember the smooth and shiny part in the video yesterday. So this is smooth and shiny. And the way it goes, it's usually that the first step is you put the soldering iron down. Look, like so it so it touches the resistor and the pad. Then you add solder, then you remove solder, and then you remove the soldering iron. Like so. And for the resistors, it's really so the polarity doesn't matter. So you don't have to align them so that uh, so that uh, current flows from left to right, or uh, so from plus to minus or minus to plus. So that doesn't matter. So it sometimes matters with capacitors, but most of the parts, uh, yeah, they doesn't matter really. So now let's go with the other smaller part, uh, which is this uh, UPDI connector or a two position uh, yeah, female connector and we basically do it in the same way so first we start with applying a little bit solder on one of the pads so here then we add the component like so. Then we turn it in a comfortable position. So and again we introduce the soldering iron here and then the solder. And for these sort of connectors you, you want to add more. You wait till it flows over the pin. Second again. Yeah. So these are nice. Um, and now for the last one. Uh, so let's again repeat the same. a little bit of solder here and then put the header And yeah, then finish up by soldering the rest of the things.
it's kind of hard to look at the screen. Ah, uh, well, yeah. So, yeah. So this is basically how it works. Uh, so yeah, you could add a little bit more. The first pin over here. So. Alright, so this is done. So I take a look, it's still hot, be careful. Uh, so, what time is now? Uh, it's 5 o'clock, so I think I could uh, still manage to show you how to mill that in a bit more detail. And for the other one, um, let's go to the Fab Academy website. So I'm going to close these so I can repeat the process from scratch. Uh, so yeah, we started with the Fab Academy website. We go to contents, 220, schedule, electronics production. We scroll down to in circuit programmer and we look for UPDI and then this second example. So we open the, the board, components, traces and interior. So the board layout, this is what we, we are going to need to find the, the right components. Then this is how it should look like at the end. And then this is what we use with the mods. Save the image here, also like just uh, on the desktop. Um, and save image as on the desktop. So, and then we go to mods, CBA. Mighty edu or we can also do the same if we um, if we click on this mods icon here on the desktop I'm just gonna check whether we are yeah here or there and then here we right click something is not working All right Oh yeah, maybe because it's cannot, there cannot be two instances open. Uh, so you go to programs, open server program, you scroll down to SRM20, PCB, PNG, and you select the image file that you want to mill. Uh, in our case, it's the USB FTDI traces file, so we open it up. And we start with mill traces um, presets. But here, for the tool diameter, we are going to set 0.3 because we are going to use the smaller tool for it. And for the cut depth, uh, it's going to be still 0.1. The total depth is going to be 0.1 and also the depth per pass. And here, yeah, also like the offset number, we could give it a bigger one, but we can it's go for it. Thank you. And then we also need to go here and make sure that we replace the WebSocket device with a file module. So we go to modules, open server module, then is the audio there? Yes. File save. Then click on file and, and the file in the input. And now for the origin, set zero. Zero, zero, zero. Jog height we can leave at two. X and Y, let's leave it to zero. And Z for the home, let's set it to five. And for the speed, again, refer to the speeds here. So for 0.3 millimeters, use one millimeter per second. And then when this is done, hit calculate. Mm, this is the path that is being generated. So you see it nicely goes in between these fine traces over here. And that's good. So then we move it to the desktop. And we create also the uh, outline file by selecting the outline PNG. Here, open. So you see this white area is what we want to leave untouched and in this case we're gonna 
choose the mill outline presets and as the same as before we are going to use 0.8 for cutting it out and 0.6 as the step down and 0.8 millimeters no 1.8 millimeters as the final final depth and hit calculate so because everything else has been is there from the traces step and then I show this in folder put it on the desktop and now yeah I can go back to combined view and um, again work with uh, with a machine um, so and to position the tool I'm going to switch to continuous mode just move it a little bit to the left um, so we can see it better and then again use this tool here <coughs> in order to release the set screw and yeah, maybe clean it a little bit but not too much also very careful not to break it and then put it back in the box like here and here and then I'm gonna pick this box with the 0 0.3 0 0.3 millimeter tool open it up insert it here so again the same principle so you put it in a bit more so a bit deeper in order to be able to release it later and now uh, so let's set the XYZ um, origin again keeping like these several things in mind that we shouldn't go too low so we should watch this gap over here um, so the, the distance between those here and now I'm going to switch to one millimeter mode um, for the Z setup so I'm going to move a bit down like this and release so hold uh, hold the tool with, uh, with one finger and one hand and then release the set screw and then slowly let the tool down and uh, just the set screw so it keeps the tool in place and hit the Z origin point button yes now I can move a few millimeters up and I'm gonna switch to continuous mode again in order to move it to the XY position that I like again to the one millimeter mode like so and at this point I can set the XY hit this yes and now we are ready to cut so before cutting don't forget to close the lid otherwise the machine is not going to start to cut so it's going to complain and yeah again like let's set the speed like the motion speed uh, to 50% uh, for starters and then click on cut delete all add and on the desktop so we should uh, look for the traces so you make sure yeah make, make sure that it's the FTDI so this is the XS yeah X small up uh, FDI traces should be that open and then output looks okay so I could also set this to 100 and now we wait it's gonna take some time tracing first and then cutting the shape out or could it do yeah because if you cut it out um, then there's a gap so 0.8 millimeter gap between the 
the source material and the board itself. Right. And then when you do traces, then the piece that is left in the middle, it's more likely to shake. Right. And you could potentially lose precision like that. Right. So now we wait. I I'm going to have a glass of water. So uh, we finished milling and then <clears throat> So there are a few a few things that we are still missing in terms of components. So while I'm looking for the components, I, I put the battery to charge because otherwise we're not going to be able to drive the microscope, so the camera somehow um, somehow is uh, yeah draining it really quickly. Uh, so yeah, I just got the one micro farad capacitor, then I got these two resistors, uh, 49 and 49 uh, ohm. Now I need these two 10 picofarad capacitors. So these we can get from here. And it looks good. Yeah, the traces look all right. They maybe could be better, but I think they're fine. Yeah, they're fine. Uh, now, yeah, I'm going to move the one to the left. And I'm going to remove the previous tool. Put it back in the box. Take the 0.8 millimeter one. And again, I'll first move it deeper. Set the set screw. Move it to a location where I have a clear access to the copper. And I'm not going to change the X and Y, I'm just going to set the Z. And now, again, so watch this gap, it should be like that. And release the set screw. Make the tool to touch the copper. Release and, uh, and set the set screw. Then hit Z in order to register the Z origin. So this Z value here is going to become zero. Now we can lift it a few millimeters, close the lid, then go to, so first maybe set it to 50% again. Go to cut, clear the previous one, add, and then the interior RML. Open and output. Good, so we can go to 100. Okay, we hit on view. Open this up. So this is not going to take too long. And basically, I think I'm just going to show you how to solder the smaller chip. It's playing the correct view. So here, uh, in terms of layout of the chip, so the chip should be also the first thing that you are soldering on the board. Uh, but notice this dot here. Uh, up. So this is uh, the f first pin. And uh, so this dot uh, also allows you to tell in which, uh, so what, what should be the orientation of the chip. So notice that. Uh, so I think yeah, uh, I could, we could switch over to the microscope. I think that the camera battery. And then 
put it under the microscope like so and yeah let's apply flux so there's the saying in electronics that there's never too much flux so I'll just add that and then we can introduce the chip over here so the layout is is somehow like this so if we look if you remember the previous image then the alignment was somehow like this so yeah so this is going to be the final layout but i'm going to move it a bit away so what i'm going to do um, so let's activate the soldering iron so again 320 degrees here now we are at 150 it's gonna go to 270 in this point we hit the right the left button and then we set it to 320 <coughs> and wait is an okay act So, then, or to microscope again. Uh, where did I put the solder? Uh, ah, yeah. Uh, Please, camera battery, do not run out. So, here we go. So, the concept is to apply a little bit of solder on the corner pins. Here. This is a yeah, it's a bit too much. No worries. And then here. Okay, well, um, <coughs> now we want to take this down. Yeah, you see it applies solder. So, um, now the trick was that you apply generous amounts of uh, flux. Here. On the other side. And then Drag. Oh no. To pull over those, and they are some magically melting. Where's the soldering? Is it on the pads? It's on the pads and also a little bit on the soldering iron. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna. Put a little bit more soldering iron. Cleaner. So yeah, the tip was the soldering iron, and then yeah. So one and then on the other side, yeah, the same. Oh. Yeah, could be better, but that's approximately the concept. Well, um, I could show you a bit more uh, about how to debug this, so whether the connections are fine or not, but uh, this is pretty much um, okay, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, um, so that's enough for today. So, yeah, thanks for being here. And then, is there any support uh, to prevent the, the PCB from moving around? From why, what? Why are soldering? Soldering? To prevent from what? 
prevent the board moving around. Ah, yeah, you can use these little uh, uh, these little things, or you can use also double-sided tape on the other side, uh, so in order to prevent it moving around. Mm -hmm. So that's a good question. <coughs> so yeah, and then that's that's it. So yeah. How did you Bye. do it without it moving?